Some critics have accused Brooks of bad taste, sometimes slipping over the edge into vulgarity. What? Knockers. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Gene Wilder, star of several Brooks films and co-author of Young Frankenstein, responds. It's not that he's looking to um, be vulgar. It's that he is vulgar. It's that he wants to get to the essence of things. And he, he takes his mind out of the way. So he's not censoring. I'm so ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed of it. As a matter of fact, I love comedy. I love... Comedy is everything. I keep a hat in the office, but things get a little serious, like now. He has to be serious. And I, I feel, in a way, I feel like I'm pontificating. What I do really is I, I get back to, to my roots, and uh, if I just put on a hat like this and just respond, then I feel that I'm uh, giving the people uh, more of the essential me than the pontificator or the pope of comedy, so to speak. The essential Mel Brooks was pretty well formed when young Melvin Kaminsky wrote in his high school yearbook that his ambition was to be president of the United States. He grew up in a poor neighborhood of Brooklyn, and he knew tragedy early in life. You did lose yeah. your father before you were three. You know. What do you mean, lost him? He died. Yes. We didn't true. lose him. If he went to Pitkin Avenue, we couldn't find him. That would be losing <laughs> him. Losing But my father actually <laughs> died. I mean, they, they buried him. No, no, seriously, yes. I was only two and a half. My brothers were my surrogate father. They were wonderful. My mother, of course, treated me like a, you know, a king. I mean, I was the baby and my father had passed away and she was really very, very solicitous of this baby. And she, I don't remember ever touching the ground in that family for six years. I think I would, and then Melvin and Melvin, and, Melvin, and I was just up in the air. That's why I don't remember the ground. What were the transitions that led you to, to creative writing for television and eventually to, to movie making? Well, the first thing that I, that, uh, in show business that attracted my attention was music. It was not comedy. Mm. And within music, within, I grew up in the big band era, within music it was the drum, because it made the most noise. Later, after uh, tremendous nervous breakdowns, I figured out that I wanted to make noise, therefore I had chosen the drum, that I wanted to pronounce myself. And I can still drum to this day because I began yeah, as a gee, drummer. Wait a minute, while we're on drumming, I'm going to oh, prove it, okay? okay. Yeah, what? Is I'll do your... just a little, the beginning with, of Sing, Sing, Sing or something. Without a drum. Now that's hard to do. It's hard to do because there are no... Desk blotter, yeah. Because the blotter doesn't give you what skills give No, that's give. right. It was as a musician, as well as a comic, that young Melvin made his way to the Jewish Catskill resorts known as the Borscht Belt, where he met another young musician and comic named Sid Caesar, who was to play a critical role in his career. Brooks became part of the Elite's Elite, the writer's group who created Your Show of Shows, and then Caesar's Hour. Here, Brooks says he sharpened his sense of timing, as well as learning to go for broke in sketches, or as he puts it, seeing the comic Mount Everest there to be scaled. Even in this rarefied company, Brooks stood out. Writer and cast member Carl Reiner remembers. I remember a very competitive and brilliant little fella who always came in a little late because he had insomnia. So he, he slept a little later than most of us. If we were in at 10 o'clock, he'd come in at 12 or 1. His bagel and coffee preceding him. Because he, of course, he used to call the, the uh, little coffee shop downstairs. And we knew he was coming because his bagel had arrived. And uh, he always came in angry because there was work that had been done, some of it good, and he would always challenge the work that had been done. He says, that's junk. And we'd say, OK, come up with something better. And he would, he would most of the time come up with something that not all of the time, but very often. When his adrenaline was working and he was in panic, Mel in panic is the most creative man I know comedically. Here he comes, making his way on stage, Mel Brooks, the 2,000-year-old man. The first public recognition for Mel Brooks grew out of what Reiner called Mel in Panic. It was at parties during the era of your show of shows. Brooks and Reiner would ad lib off a simple premise. 2,000-year-old man appears on Earth. Needless to say, there's great curiosity, and so he's interviewed endlessly. These party sketches were later recorded and soon performed on television variety shows. Everybody, everybody is interested in living a long time. Now, what is the secret of your longevity? The thing that's kept me rolling along, singing a song for 2,000 years, <laughs> is exercise. You Every exercise. morning. Would you tell us how the, how the exercise goes? You put your hands above your head. Above your head. You clasp them together. Clasp them together. You crash your knees to the floor, and you pray for 20 minutes. <laughs> that's 
prayer, sir. prayer has kept you alive. Yes, and I pray that a ceiling shouldn't fall on me and that my heart should not attack me. That <laughs> has kept you alive. At about the same time, a young and very beautiful star was rising on Broadway. She had already won a Tony for her performance in Two for the Seesaw, and she was starring in The Miracle Worker. Then, on a freezing day in February of 1961, Anne Bancroft met a comedy writer named Mel Brooks. She was on the Perry Como show. I came to watch her rehearse. She was singing Married I Can Always Get in a beautiful white gown. I was doing a Perry Como. I was singing Married I Could Always Get. And he walked in with an old friend of mine and somebody else, because he was writing a show with them. And he came in, and there I was up there singing, you know. And... I couldn't take my eyes off her. I walked down the aisle, and I fell. I fell down, and someone said, what happened? I said, I think I fell in love. And oh it's God. true. <clears throat> After the number, I said, Ann Bancroft, can I meet you? And she said, you're Mel Brooks. He yelled, yeah, very, very rough, and said, Ann Bancroft, I'm Mel Brooks. She said, I'm a big fan of yours. And I said, well, I don't fall in love easily, but I mean, I would if, if I could just hang out with you for a couple of years. So I said, oh, really? <laughs> so nice to meet you. you know, I was very feminine and very nice. And, and then he followed me everywhere I went for the next five days. She came from the Bronx. I came from Brooklyn. We both liked scrambled eggs. Everything was terrific. When were you aware that he, as he claims, was in love with you instantly? When was I aware yeah. that he was in love with me instantly? Yeah, that he had this fallen moment. in love. Like, I had no you're, idea you're he was out in right love now. with me instantly. <laughs> no, oh. that's, what, that's what he said, that he... Oh, no, he, I was in love with him instantly. Re well, then both Instantly. Then, yeah. Because, you see, he looked like my father, yeah. and he acted like my mother. We hit it off. It was just a marriage made in New York. Tell me, 2,000-year-old man, what do you think Mel Brooks' greatest work was? I think his greatest was to talking and Bancroft into marrying him. This is a work of art. How he conned that woman to marrying this short, funny-looking Jew is... Uh, this is the mystery, the world. He's still trying to finger out and finger out. Who is Mel Brooks? What has he done? No, Come this on. is a big question. All Ooh, right. This is big. I don't. I, Orson Welles couldn't answer this question. This is a, What is Mel Brooks? Half a cantaloupe, half a genius, a pineapple, a Jew. Who knows? It's a wild combination. What did he do for the world? What he made, he gave the world a giggle. And right now, he is still giving the world a giggle. We'll be right back with Consumer Talk.